The video display has become an important part of the computer system. This was brought about by the development of various video interface chips. Basically, video interface chips send the data from memory locations to the video display. Most monitors are nothing more than specially designed television receivers. Earlier video interface circuitry consisted of a character generator with latched inputs and a shift register at the output. The character generator was basically a ROM device which contained all the alphanumeric characters called the character font. We will begin by examining how this simple circuit worked. The typical computer system will have a portion of its RAM set aside to store the characters which will appear on the monitor screen. This section is referred to as the video RAM. And in earlier models, this section was typically 512 bytes. Now with larger modern computers, the demand for video RAM space has greatly increased. Since there were 512 bytes of RAM set aside for the video screen, the display was divided into 512 sections. The screen was divided into 32 horizontal sections, or columns, and 16 rows were displayed. Each section was able to display one alphanumeric character. As the keys on the keyboard were pressed, the characters were converted into a 7-bit format and stored in the video RAM in the sequence in which they were typed. Meanwhile, the display monitor would scan the screen with a 192 electron beam scan lines at a rate of approximately 60 times a second. On each line, there would be 256 dots of energy or pixels of light. Each bit or dot could be turned on or off according to the data being inputted. As you recall, the video RAM was fed through a latching device into the character generator. The character generator is nothing more than a ROM coding device. It receives the 7-bit formatted data and outputs 7 scan lines of 5 dots each per character. If you were to magnify a single character section, you would notice that each character could be illustrated in this 5 by 7 block by simply turning on or off each point of light within the designated area. Through the use of clocking signals for proper timing, the serial data is fed into the monitor's input circuitry, then scanned onto the faceplate of the screen. Basically, the data was used to control the electron gun contained in the cathode ray tube. In recent years, however, the latches, character generator, shift registers, and other support circuits have all been contained in a single IC package. The basic operation of these newer ICs is essentially the same as the earlier video interface circuits. However, they are much easier to service due to everything being contained in one dual inline package. Here you see a very popular video interface integrated circuit. This IC chip contains its own type of support latches and registers previously described. However, this device uses an 8x8 or 12x8 character font and is capable of generating a color screen as well as support circuitry for refreshing dynamic RAM chips and CPU clock timing. This input-output device transforms digital signals into complex video waveforms used by composite-type monitors. By now, you should be familiar with many of the pins located on this device. Pins 1 through 7 and pin 39 are the data bus connections, which represent data bits 6 through 0 and data bit 7, respectively. These lines transfer data bidirectionally to and from the device. IRQ, labeled at pin 8, which you have previously learned is the interrupt request line output. When this line normally held high goes low, the device requires service from the CPU. The pin labeled LP at pin 9 is the light pen input. This input lets the user take an electronic type pen, which is basically a photoelectric switch, and draw on the screen of the monitor. The light of the monitor triggers the switch. The chip select, labeled CS, is located at pin 10. When this input, normally high, goes low, the device will be selected for read-write operations by the CPU's addressing. However, when pins 16 and 17 go low, this device ignores whatever logic condition is present at the chip select pin. Pin 11 is labeled RW. This is the familiar read-write pin, which is tied directly to the CPU. When this chip is selected, as previously mentioned, the read-write input pin, normally held high, determines the direction data will travel on the bidirectional data bus. That's pins 1 through 7 and pin 39. 
When pin 11 is high, the CPU will expect to read the device's addressed register. When pin 11 is pulled low by the CPU, data will be addressed to a register and written into the device. However, when pins 16 and 17 go low, the 6567 video interface device ignores whatever logic condition is present on this read-write pin. The next pin down, pin 12, is labeled BA. It is the bus available output. This normally high output is brought low when the device needs an extra clock pulse to access one of its internal registers or to access external RAM or ROM memory. When this device determines it does need the extra clock pulse, the BA pin is pulled low before the clock pulse on pin 17 goes back to high. Pin 13 is labeled VDD. It is simply a positive regulated 12 volt power supply to the chip. Pin 14 is labeled color. This pin supplies all the color information required by the composite monitor to reproduce various colors. Without the use of this pin, a monochrome or one color display shows up on the screen. Pin 15 is labeled loom sync. It determines the luminance or brightness of the dots on the screen. Sync refers to the method of keeping the dots perfectly aligned with each other. The next pin down, pin 12, is labeled BA. It is the bus available output. This normally high output is brought low when the device needs an extra clock pulse to access one of its internal registers or to access external RAM or ROM memory. When this device determines it does need the extra clock pulse, the BA pin is pulled low before the clock pulse on pin 17 goes back to high. Pin 13 is labeled VDD. It is simply a positive regulated 12 volt power supply to the chip. Pin 14 is labeled color. This pin supplies all the color information required by the composite monitor to reproduce various colors. Without the use of this pin, a monochrome or one color display shows up on the screen. Pin 15 is labeled loom sync. It determines the luminance or brightness of the dots on the screen. Sync refers to the method of keeping the dots perfectly aligned with each other. Note both pins 14 and 15 are the only pins on the 6567 that are not digital. These output pins are analog. An oscilloscope must be used to read the complex waveforms being generated by these two pins. A digital logic probe just wouldn't reflect the true composition of both waveforms. The next pin down is pin 16. This pin is labeled AEC, which stands for Address Enable Control. This output line is used for actually placing the CPU and other chips not required by the video section in a high impedance state when the device needs the second clock pulse to operate. AEC goes low only after the bus available signal has been sent to the CPU and pin 17 has passed three high clock pulses. When AEC is normally high, the CPU operates as usual and the video interface may be addressed by the CPU. Pin 17, labeled REFCLK, is the reference clock that generates a series of clock pulses, usually around 1 MHz, and is used by the CPU for timing throughout the entire computer system. When this pin is low, the CPU does not operate during this low pulse. This lets the 6567 video interface IC do its job, such as refreshing RAM and reading memory for video signal composition. When this pin is high, the CPU is in normal control of the system. However, if the 6567 needs an extra clock pulse to finish up, AEC will become low, putting the CPU into a high impedance state during its normal high pulse of operation. This allows the video chip to use the CPU's high pulse to control address and data lines normally controlled by the CPU. Pins 18 and 19 are used in conjunction with one another to refresh the dynamic RAM memory chips contained in the computer system. Pin 18 is labeled RAS. This stands for Row Address Strobe. Pin 19 is labeled CAS, which stands for Column Address Strobe. If you don't fully understand how or why dynamic RAM chips are refreshed, refer to Digital 5 of this You Can Do series for a proper understanding of memory devices. Pin number 20 is labeled VSS. This is the ground pin of the chip that goes to the zero voltage potential. On the bottom right of the video interface IC is pin 21, 
labeled color CLK. This is the color clock input pin that uses approximately 14 megahertz pulse train as a reference for building the analog waveform coming out of pin 14 labeled color. The next pin up, pin 22, is labeled CLKIN. This is the clock input pin, which is also referred to as the dot clock. This pin receives an approximate 8 megahertz pulse used internally by the chip for its own timing and positioning of the electron beam. The pulse is also divided by 8 for output on pin 17, which in turn is used by the CPU for system clock reference. Pins 23 through 34 are all address lines. Let's first focus on pins 24 through 29, labeled A0, A8, A1, A9, A2, A10, A3, A11, A4, A12, and A5, A13. These individual pins are used in a method called multiplexing, which in this case is simply the organized sharing of pins. When the RAS signal on pin 18 goes low, the address bits A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5 are placed on pins 24 through 29, respectively. And when the CS signal on pin 19 goes low, the address bits A8, A9, A10, A11, A12, and A13 are placed on pins 24 through 29, respectively. Addressing of the video interface by the CPU occurs when the address enable control pin is normally high and the chip select pin is low. This sets up bits A0 through A5 of pins 24 to 29 to be used for addressing all 47 of the chip's internal registers. Since there are only 47 internal registers in the device and 64 possible addressing combinations which can be present on pins 24 to 29, Various combinations of internal registers can be addressed at one time, thus merging all corresponding register bits together to form one basic input or output. Pins 30 and 31, labeled A6 and A7, are two address lines used by the chip to simply address two kilobytes of memory. The output of these two pins represent a form of program counter that is used by an external addressing multiplexer circuit to select character ROM and video RAM data. Notice that all of the pins 24 through 31 output addresses onto address lines for accessing its own data much like the CPU. We finally come to pins 23, 32, 33, and 34 which are labeled A11, A8, A9, and A10 respectively. These pins are normal address lines which have no special function but to simply receive signals from the CPU's address bus. Pins 35 through 38 are labeled D11, D10, D9, and D8. These four data lines coming from color RAM tell the video interface chip what color to make the characters that appear on the screen. The four data bits make it possible for the video chip to display up to 16 different character colors on the screen at one time. When the video interface addresses the dot patterns from video RAM or character ROM, color RAM also gets addressed at the same time. Pins 35 through 38 input data to provide color for the display screen. The last pin we have to cover is pin 40. Labeled VCC, this pin is simply the positive regulated 5 volt power supply to the chip. We will now pause for a final review of the most recently discussed material. The video RAM receives data from an input device such as a keyboard or telephone modem. The exact placement of data in video RAM represents the location which it will appear on the face of the monitor's screen. The character generator or character ROM is programmed with the patterns of characters which get displayed on the screen. This is referred to as the character font. The character font for every letter is made up of a block of bits. The bit's logic state determines if a point of light will be scanned onto the face of the monitor. A point of light is also referred to as a dot or pixel. The video interface in any computer must continuously scan through video RAM so that the correct block of bits stored in character ROM may be indexed and displayed on the face of the monitor's screen. Otherwise, the dots or pixels of light 
formed by the electron beam scanning the face of the monitor screen would fade out so quickly an image would be almost imperceptible to the human eye. This concludes review number five. If you have problems understanding any portion of this video, rewind and view as many times as necessary until you have a full understanding of the material presented. Since the central processing unit is the heart of any computer system, it becomes necessary that you know and understand how it works. Remember, the best jobs will go to those who are the best prepared. With the help of You Can Do videos, your knowledge and understanding of today's complex circuits will help make you a leader in troubleshooting tomorrow's electronic equipment.